Every guard you come across in a stealth game is a sort of puzzle. How do I get past this guy without being spotted? Or do I just put an arrow through his face? That's the kind of thing that Thief does well, using nice looking shadows and scenarios with multiple paths to make us think before we steal. Everything else, from a clunky story and flat characters to a frustrating mess of a central map, made me wish that this Thief reboot hadn't bothered trying to connect those scenarios with fiction at all. As his title would imply, main character Garrett steals pretty much anything that isn't nailed down, including junk like forks, pens, cups, you name it. His indiscriminate kleptomania makes him seem more like a petty thief than a master, though. And he doesn't have the charm, either in his flat voice acting or his lame, poorly lip-synced dialogue, to make him a lovable Robin Hood rogue rather than some jerk who goes around swiping utensils off innocent people's tables. Do you believe in ghosts? Huh? Spirits. You know, the dead coming back to haunt the living, punish them. He's also wearing a corset for some reason. Going for a true stealth playthrough is a game of patience, waiting for the right moment to either slip through a hole in the guard's patrol pattern undetected or take out targets one at a time. You can't really overpower any enemies unlucky enough to catch a glimpse of you, because melee combat is a dumb and repetitive dance of dodging an enemy's obvious incoming attack and then countering. It's easy against one enemy, but really tough against two or more. But that's okay, because a good stealth game does everything it can to convince us to avoid a direct confrontation. The stealth system is where Thief works best. It's tough but fair, and it gives you breathing room to avoid detection when you keep to the shadows. The impressive lighting makes it almost believable that sometimes you can get close enough to a guard to steal the boogers from his nose undetected. The swoop ability, where you dash about 15 feet ahead almost invisibly, is what makes Garrett feel like a badass ninja and one of the best things about Thief. But most of his other movements feel clumsy, awkward, and inconsistent. For example, if the level designers didn't specifically say, yes, you can climb this, then you can't. Even if it looks like you should be able to. Even jumping off a ledge is a pain. Sometimes you can just walk off the edge, other times you have to push a button to drop, and others you can't drop down at all. That's just part of what makes moving around the main hub map constantly frustrating. The city, as it's simply known, is a maze-like jumble of dark, narrow streets and tight passages over rooftops that mostly look alike. I hate the way the city map is broken up with frequent loading screens, which can last upwards of 20 seconds on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. It makes Thief seem like an old game. Worse, it robs the city of a sense of continuity and makes it hard to get where you're going. Even with the minimap, getting from point A to point B is a huge pain, especially when the citizens get stuck in an annoying conversation loop and repeat the same dialogue. <laughs> I just rolled with Polly Adler, the sweetest smelling doc frock in this skin market. I guess her perfume's still clinging to me. Some of the campaign missions that follow the bland, supernatural-driven story take you to distinctive locations, like a colorful brothel and a genuinely creepy asylum. But too often the level design feels claustrophobic and doesn't leave much room to maneuver. They do have branching paths, and a handful have interesting puzzles at least. In certain scenarios, mostly the side missions, things open up and give you room to decide how you want to get in and out of a building through the vents, the basement, the roof, or just barging in the front door. You're rated on each mission by what approach you took and how often you were spotted, so there is lots of incentive to go back and try different approaches. Garrett's focused vision power is a bit of a crutch, but it is a much appreciated one that cuts out frustrating searches for interactive items in a very dark game. You can buy focus upgrades to make the lockpick minigame easier, or give you hints about where treasure is stashed, but the only one that really changed the way I played in a negative way was the combat upgrade that let me quickly take down alerted guards. Of course, a really good thing about Thief is that it can scale its difficulty however you want. I found the normal Thief difficulty setting to be tough enough for me, but pulling off a master level heist with auto saves, focus, and crosshairs disabled without being spotted is going to be worth some serious bragging rights. Because of that, Thief can take about as long as you want it to to complete. My time to beat the campaign in most side missions was about 15 hours, but it would take much longer if I tried to stealth at all. That's pretty much how you have to look at Thief, as a collection of challenging scenarios. Two of those can be accessed independently from the challenge menu with a selection of timed goals. You'll find one additional map is available as DLC. Thief does have some strong stealth mechanics going for it, and getting away unseen with a big haul of loot can be an enormous challenge. But it doesn't always put that to good use. Between the hit or miss missions is an extremely annoying city hub map, and a weak story full of bland characters and Garrett himself isn't as sure-footed as a Master Thief ought to be. Ignoring the story and cherry-picking the best side missions is the best way to approach it. For more on Thief, stick around on IGN. Now here's a little thieving in action. I'll be 
glad when this is all over.